a good piece I saw today that was uh, written um, written up by actually Mr Dunn in Newsroom and it starts talking about the proposed fair access to toilets bill, which would require all new non-domestic publicly accessible buildings to provide separate, clearly demarcated unisex and single-sex bathrooms. Um, now, Winston Peters says the issue of fair access to toilets is a legitimate one that affects many New Zealanders with a variety of health and other conditions that have actually nothing to do with gender politics. And one such group of those uh, are with, with bowel disorders such as Crohn's disease and ulcerated colitis, for whom fair access to toilets is very real and often an urgent matter. Uh, inflammatory bowel diseases do not discriminate by age or gender. They affect the lives of, of kids, teens, young adults and the elderly. Aside from the medical issues, Crohn's and colitis sufferers, especially young people, often face severe esteem and confidence problems. And this is something I did not know until I was reading up on this, is we've got one of the highest rates in the world uh, of diseases like Crohn's and colitis. And get this, we've got around 20,000 patients at the moment, but that is predicted to double by 2026 in just a couple of years, and there's no cure. However, with the right medication and support, most people live a relatively normal life. But the matter of fair and easy access to toilets always looms large for them. Now, joining me to, to explain more about this is uh, Belinda Brown. She's CEO of Crohn's and Colitis New Zealand, and she's with us. Hello, Belinda. Hi, Leah. How are you? I'm good. Look, thank you for your time, especially on a Friday. I really do appreciate it. Belinda, Firstly, I, I mean, a lot of our listeners, my listeners may not be familiar with Crohn's uh, or colitis, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, if you can give us a, a bit of an explanation about it, uh, I understand it's a, it's, it, it's a disease and it affects your bowels. Yep. yep. So it's, yep. Um, it's an inflammatory bowel disease. It's like the, parent, oh, it's like the, the umbrella term, right, for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So not to be confused with irritable bowel syndrome. So when someone says IBD, or it's not the same as IBS. Okay. Um, so IBD is a um, it is a chronic illness. Um, so you have to manage it for the rest of your life. Um, people have sections of their bowel cut out. Some people um, have um, ostomies put in because of it. Um, you know, some people just have to manage their symptoms as best they can um, on the medications that we have available here in New Zealand, which obviously there's lots more available overseas, um, you know, like there is for the cancer meds and, and what have you. Um, right. But yeah, I think um, it's it's a, an autoimmune disease that, um, so ulcerative colitis is only in your large intestine. Okay. Um, whereas Crohn's can be anywhere from your mouth to your anus. So oh you can gosh. get it in any part of your digestive tract. And they're like little ulcers that form and um, go through the wall um, of your bowel. So um, I actually have Crohn's disease. I was diagnosed in 2002 with it. Um, okay. And when I had, um, when I got my diagnosis, um, I'd actually had a hole in the wall of my bowel. Um, that had been, uh, because an abscess had ruptured um, on my small intestine and it grew out a whole other section of bowel called an internal fistula and um, all my food was going in there and rotting and oh. then coming in eventually. So I was going from constipation to diarrhoea. Um, I was very tired. I would vomit halfway through dinner and then get up and I'd lost 20 kilos in two months. I was Gosh. very, very sick. Um, I dropped right down to 48 kg, um, oh, I think, Linda. was my lowest, which at that point Is... I was smaller than a size 6. So what? how, how old were you then, so, Belinda? How old when you were diagnosed? I was 26. Okay, wow. Okay. And, yeah. And, and so, so um, but, how, up but until it can 20... affect everyone from any age. Yes. Which is the thing. Well, that was that was yeah. that's what I said in the you know when I was w was looking at this this piece in newsroom, 
if, that it can affect, you know, the, the age or gender or the age, elderly to children. You mm. were 26. Yep. Prior to that, yep. had you had you had any symptoms? Yeah, I had six years of misdiagnosis, unfortunately, back then oh. um, when I was diagnosed. The tools weren't as good as what they are now. Um, okay. And I guess we didn't have the resources that we have now, you know, like we have IBD nurses and all these, and much more access to gastros and things like that, which we never had back then. Um, but, um, you know, we do have one of the highest rates in the world, um, and 20,000 was the number that, the magic number that we came up with in 2017 when we um, released the Burden of Disease Report. Okay. Um, but um, there's now estimates saying that it's currently sitting around 32,000. Um, and, yeah, and so, yeah, set to hit 40 by 2026. Right, yeah. And, gosh, that's... Because when I read that, I thought, what, 20? But we're going to double in 2026. And do you mm, do you yeah. know why we've got one of the highest rates? Is, this, is it our lifestyle? No. Is it a, what? Why do we... Why I think it's these... a combination. Okay. Yeah, so there's there's lots of things and there's lots of research going into it. Um, and, um, you know, Professor Richard Gary in um, the South Island has been, um, him and his team have been looking into um, gut microbiome and things like that. They do know genetics can play a factor. They know that environment can play a factor. They do know diet can contribute to symptoms and, and mm. play factors and things like that. So there's, I always call it, you've got to have the perfect storm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not a, it's, it's, like the, it's like the gift that keeps on giving, but just <laughs> not in a good way. It's not like no. Christmas every day. <laughs> yeah. It's just it, I mean, is there, well, there remains, I can imagine, then, an, an ignorance or lack of understanding about these diseases and their impacts. Yeah. And, 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 and I don't think it's society's fault. We're just not. It, it, it's. I've like I said. I had to do a little bit of dig, you know reading and digging into this myself. But yeah, it kind of goes under the public radar. But what I found interesting about this story too was, and you'll you'll probably be aware of it, that back in the two, early two thousands, there was a young uh, a young girl who in the United States, a fourteen year old, she had Crohn's, and she campaigned yep. for better. Ellie Bain. Ali Bain, yeah, and they ended up calling it Ali's Law yeah. because she she wanted access to public yeah. toilets for those medical conditions. And now you've got 20 states that have put versions of this law into place. Here in New Zealand, yep. we tried something in yep. 2017 with a 12-year-old girl, we Nicole did. Thornton. Nicole. She, she tried the same. She got thousands of signatures and basically, besides a, a recommendation from a panel, it kind of went nowhere, Belinda. Yeah. Yeah, so what, what she, she was 12 when she testified at the House Select Committee. Yeah. Um, and she, you know, she raised a lot of awareness around IBD around then. Um, the law wasn't passed. It was to gain access to workplace toilets, um, right. which is incredibly important because, right, public toilets, well, you know, for the normal average human being, they're going, oh, yeah, there's a public toilet over there. It's fine. Yeah. Um, they can walk you know, 300, 400 metres to, to the toilet to go. Um, yeah. I've had to, I've literally walked across the car park, had to stop halfway across the car park and I pull out my phone and make out like I'm looking at something on my phone. But really I'm standing there, I'm squeezing my butt cheeks together going, oh, please, please don't have an accident here. Please don't have an accident here. And then yeah. the urge has kind of eased a little bit. I've been able to walk again. I've got to the footpath, stepped up and had an accident the moment I've gone to step up on the footpath.